I'm Greg, and this is my favorite cocktail on the Citadel. Have drink in hand, shoot after episode. Oh. I'm Greg, and these are my favorite drinks on the Citadel. <laughs> Today I'm making some drinks from Mass Effect. Now, I never actually got into Mass Effect. I'd already played the hell out of it when it was called Star Control, but it is by all accounts a phenomenal game, and I bet you have at least somewhere between a passing familiarity and a rabid devotion to the franchise, so I'm not going to waste time explaining Mass Effect to you, okay? Instead, let's get right into the drinks, but which drinks? Because Mass Effect has quite a few for me to adapt, and since I don't think I can do them all, I'm certainly about to disappoint some of you, I'm quite sure. What is of the most interest to me is the DLC called The Citadel, which was a follow-on, I'm told, that was designed to alleviate some of the bad taste in the fan base's mouth after the conclusion of Mass Effect 3. I'm just going by what I was told, as I mentioned, Star Control. There's a scene just before the game's final hurrah, where specialist Samantha Trainer reveals that she used to work as a bartender and makes herself available to shake up drinks for the crew. Trust me, Edie. I worked at a bar to pay for university. But what about Rincall? I hear you all screaming into the void and into my comments. Well, I I'm going to tell you about Rincall. Rincall is just like another in a long line of kind of poorly conceived sci-fi and fantasy drinks that tell you nothing about them except that they are unpleasant and impossibly, supernaturally strong. And really, there's only so much I can do with that kind of info. First off, there is a physical limit to how strong a drink can be if its active ingredient is ethanol. Maybe in ring call it's something else, but how do I simulate that? I would make the drink boozier. But then there's a practical upper limit on how strong a drink can be before it's simply neat spirits. So it's really strong is kind of useless to me. <laughs> Secondly, as far as my research tells me, there's no real information in the game about Krogan cuisine. The flavor profiles that come up in their cooking the stuff that they eat or drink outside of consuming ring call. In Mass Effect 2, when they show you the liquid, it's the same color as every other liquid the bartender pours. It is green and clear, so, so I got nothing. You're just not gonna get ring call out of me. It's not gonna happen. Instead, let's make a full biotic kick. Now, this drink was requested by Caden Alenko, himself a biotic. That's telekinesis, KG. Ever hear of a full biotic kick? Now, according to specialist trainer, Bourbon, Tuchanka dry, twist of orange, and ginger beer to fill. Uh, Tuchanka is the name of the original Krogan homeworld, which they made inhospitable through the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, there's also new Tuchanka, which is a colony on uh, Eladin. Uh, Eladin? Eladin, I think you'd pronounce that? Eladin. Eladin, maybe. There's two A's in there. I don't know how to pronounce that. And my research um, was text-based. So, am I going to get... I am. I'm probably going to get more shit about pronouncing Tuchanka and Aladdin and Krogan wrong than I will any French word or Italian word ever. Anyway, the Krogans made their original homeworld Tuchanka inhospitable through the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, there is also this new Tuchanka colony on Eladen, but I've got no references here as to what kind of alcohol production is happening in either place. But there was something, I guess, about the descriptions of old Tuchanka with like thick jungles growing from salty seas orbiting a star called the Eye of Wrath that made me think of some kind of herbal amaro. And I have it on good authority, actually my own testing and iteration on this recipe, that Amaro de Angostura is the closest thing to dry Tachanka you can find on Earth. So uh, that's what I'm going to use. Personally, I think a full biotic kick is a perfect drink to build in the glass. I would just treat it like a mule. But if you want to shake your ingredients, I'm not going to stop you. I can't. You're at home and I'm over here. So I'm going to start with the glass I'll be drinking it out of. And in this case, I'm going to use this spherical glass that I bought for doing drinks from Valhalla, the uh, cyberpunk bartending simulator, and I never ever get to use otherwise. It is perfectly science fictional and appropriate for this drink. And I'm going to do that right after this message from today's sponsor. Okay, got it, thanks honey, bye. Hey, is that magic spoon? <sighs> yeah, I guess I got time. You know, when I'm on the run, I often wind up skipping breakfast, but with Magic Spoon, I don't have to anymore. See, even though most of the quick on-the-go breakfast stuff is full of sugar and carbs, and frankly, I don't have time for that kind of thing, but Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar and only four carbs per serving, only 140 calories per serving, and 13 or 14 grams of protein per serving. And for somebody like me, with so many places to be, a bowl of cereal is quick enough to fit into my lifestyle. With the addition of maple waffle and cookies and cream, they've got eight flavors, and you can build your own custom four box on the website. Which would you choose? I'm still pretty partial to this cocoa. Mm. But whatever you try, Magic Spoon backs their product with a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Who's got time for questions anyway? Click the link below and use code HGD at checkout to get 
five dollars off your order. Oh, hey, look at the time. I've got to go. I've got to go. I've got to got to go. Please. We're going to make a full biotic kick, and I'm going to start with the glass. I'm going to drink it out of, in this case, this sphere, because it feels really science fiction-y. I don't think that in the game that they drink it out of a sphere, but why shouldn't they? I will approximately fill this glass with cracked ice. It's going to be tricky to do that. We're going to give it our best shot. Like I'm a pro or something, right? There you go. Get in there. Perfect. No complaints. To that, I want to add one ounce of Amaro de Angostura. Amara. That's really good stuff, by the way. I love Amaro de Angostura. It's cool and uh, probably available on Curiata, by the way, if you wanted to pick that up. It's at drink.curiata.com. Check it out in the link below. Everything I use in this episode should be available up there, or at least an analog to it. Certainly, if you're following along at home, they've got the stuff that I use in the How to Drink collection. Now I wanna use uh, two ounces of bourbon, and I'm gonna use this Yellowstone Select because there's, I like it, it's good bourbon. I should use a funnel with this kind of glass, maybe. It's a little tricky. I, I, I did not count on how like awkward this would be to pour into. Could I stir it? Sure, I could stir it a little. I don't think it's gonna be necessary though because we're about to top it up with some cold ginger beer. Use the ginger beer you like. If you wanna make your own, you can. We've done that on the show. Today, I don't really use it much. That's actually not even the ginger beer I used to test this recipe, but it should not matter. I'm gonna use Q ginger beer. Let's see how it is. It's perfect. It's very dry, very gingery. That'll be great. Hot and spicy. Not very sweet at all, very low sugar. I mean, honestly, you might want something with a little more sugar than that. Anyway, I'm gonna to top it up with about four ounces of this spicy ginger beer. And since this glass is a sphere, I'm not gonna to try to eyeball it too much. Boom. And now we need to pull a peel from an orange. And I think it'll be fun to do a really long one. Almost treat this like a horse's neck. I'm gonna give that a little twist here. I guess you could twist the whole thing, what the heck. It's a little bit over its top and see if it looks neat and science fiction-y kind of floating around the inside of my glass. I hope it does. Yeah, that kind of works. If your glass has a lid, you wanna screw that down at this point and then put the plastic straw in there. There it is, the full biotic kick. My favorite drink on the Citadel. Eh, eh? Let's see how it came out. Yeah, I like this a lot. I do think that actually this might be a place where you would want maybe a slightly sweeter ginger beer. When I was working this out, I was using a different ginger beer on my recipe and I think there was a little bit more sugar in it. I'm gonna do something silly. I'm gonna taste it like this and I'm gonna put it in like a couple bar spoons and see if how it improves it. This is basically a, a bourbon mule, right? Like it's a Kentucky mule, but with a weird twist in it, which is coming from the Angostura, um, Amaro de Angostura. There's a lot of the Angostura notes in there, but with this kind of elongated flavor profile, it's a little less uh, pungent, but still present. And with also these herbal notes, kind of like a Benedictine, it gives this drink a very unique character without overpowering or being overpowered by the ginger beer or the bourbon. Everybody is present and it tastes to me familiar and yet very different. Like something I've never, like not quite ever had and good, enjoyable. So I feel like this is exactly what I wanted to do with this drink. I do think that the cue, now that I'm actually using that, why did we switch? Why? Because I had two cans left of this other ginger beer, uh, Jamaica something or other, and I needed more. And what they had at the grocery store was the cue. The Jamaica stuff was definitely had a little bit higher sugar qu quotient. And I think that maybe I'm going to put a link. I have to find out what brand it was, but I do think that like um, a couple brands would be fine. I'll put them in the links below. I actually think this one is not the one to use. I think we want to put a little bit more sweetness in here. Just a little, well, maybe a lot. And just stir that up. When I was working on this recipe a little earlier ago with a little sweeter ginger beer, the um, Amaro was much rounder and present in a very pleasant way. And I think it just needs that drop of sweetness to kind of, kind of live in harmony in this drink much better. It helps it a lot. And you still get plenty of I mean, honestly, I think it's spicier. I think that the ginger spice now has a longer and more pronounced evolution. It comes in later, which leaves a lot of room for the Amaro and bourbon to kind of round out the flavor. Ooh, man, it's really now, sorry, I, I didn't think I was gonna have more to say about this drink, but I do. Now there's really this wonderful thing that's happening here where the orange and maybe this, I've, I've stirred it a little bit more. The orange is really getting in there, that orange oil is getting into that Amaro 
and they are linking up in a really delicious way. And that's kind of where this drink is leading from. And then it goes into the bourbon, which, man, what is the bourbon in here? Honestly, I've had, now I've got so much ginger beer burn. I'm having a little bit of a hard time pulling the bourbon apart now, but I think that in this, in this mix, you're getting quite a bit of bubble gum and vanilla actually. Um, off of that bourbon. And then of course we move right into whew, ginger beer, spicy, burning, delicious, sexy? Is ginger beer sexy? Spicy, burning, delicious, sexy ginger beer? Yeah, why not? Sexy ginger beer. Very enjoyable, really fun drink. It leaves you with a nice ginger burn. We're gonna move on to the next drink, but I might wanna leave myself the option to put a commercial here. So maybe there's a commercial here. Let's move things right along to the Tasty Tankard. Grunt, who is a Krogan, which is basically a lizard Klingon, asks Trainer about this drink, which he refers to as a human drink, so we know it's it's one of ours. It's not a Krogan drink. I read about something called a tasty tankard. Uh, it's not one I've heard of, but Trainer describes it. Irish cream, coconut rum, iced chocolate, and butterscotch schnapps. So this is uh, uh, very much so a dessert drink, and also, might I add, an incredibly sophisticated flavor profile. I mean, you have to have a very refined palate to enjoy that combination of Irish cream, coconut rum, butternut scotch, and iced chocolate. Now, my first instinct when I hear that list of ingredients is to make this drink very small, like a two or three ounce little nightcap kind of thing, like a pousse cafe, but it's also called a tasty tankard. And a tankard is a, a pretty big mug kind of thing. I brought two options here. I mean, they're huge. Really, this is a tankard, it's 20 ounces. The other one's more of a mug. So while that creamy, sweet list of chocolatey ingredients calls to mind these kinds of small serving pre-prohibition dessert cocktails, I think if I reconsider the proportions of my instincts and think of this really as a big mug of iced chocolate that's been flavored and nudged along by a few modifier liqueurs, something of about the size of a tankard could be achieved. Of course, to start with, I need to make some iced chocolate. Knowing that this drink will get plenty of sweetness from its other ingredients, I'm actually gonna try to keep the iced chocolate on the cacao heavy, bitter chocolate side of the spectrum. So I got some 90% cacao dark chocolate bars, combined them with milk in a saucepan at a ratio of five to one. So I did 500 grams of milk and 100 grams of chocolate. I slowly heated it and kept stirring with a whisk until the chocolate was all melted. I will say that when it's colder month, and I'm making hot chocolate. I think I go way heavier on the chocolate. I used to live in New York and there's a couple of these Jacques Torres uh, chocolatier places and uh, on a cold day, people line up and get their, their hot chocolate. And I made the mistake of like saving mine for later once and it turned into chocolate mousse. That stuff is literally, it stays liquid because it is hot. If it cools, it solidifies into mousse and you eat it with a spoon and it is still delicious, I might say. The five to one stuff though makes a very, very chocolatey, unsweetened chocolate milk that will not turn solid on you. At least mine hasn't. It might sediment a little bit, but you can just shake it right up, okay? And uh, by the way, somebody might ask, did you consider going with the chili, uh, like a spicy kind of Mexican chocolate thing? I did, I actually tried it both ways. I tried it with some like smoked chipotle powder in the mix. I felt like with the butterscotch and like the other flavors that were present, it was kind of in competition. It wasn't really, it wasn't working out the way I wanted it to. I just don't think this is a place to do the spicy chocolate thing. I think it's a mistake. The rest of the drink is, is pretty simple. In my shaker, but since I'm gonna go with this 20 ounce tankard, I'm going to need two shakers. In two shakers, I'm going to put six ounces of chocolate, ice chocolate in each one. Six ounces. So we're going very heavy on the chocolate stuff, right? Whoop. Six ounces in each of these. And frankly, I think if you were making this for a Krogan, 20 ounces does sound about right. These guys are very large heads. They have huge heads. Now I need an ounce and a half of the butterscotch schnapps. And for me, really, only the very best butterscotch schnapps. Um, I think that you'll find De Kuiper uh, butterscotch schnapps, butter shots it's called in fact, uh, available at the wino shop near you. Also on Curiata, hopefully. Ounce and a half of this, which is, a heavy pour, but remember, we're competing with six ounces of iced chocolate, so. And actually 12 ounces of iced chocolate. But then I guess it's three ounces of butterscotch schnapps. And that smells very sweet. Now I need three quarters of an ounce of Malibu. As I said, only the very finest in this extremely refined drink. This human drink from Mass Effect. The drink of the humans, my people. 
Are there better coconut rums? Probably, but there's not another coconut rum that tastes quite like suntan lotion the way that this one does. And uh, now we need a three quarters of an ounce of Bailey's Irish cream. And I actually like Bailey's. I, you know, there are upmarket Irish creams out there that you can get. They're cool, they're good. Bailey's is kind of the thing I want here. <laughs> I don't think you want to go with the fancier Irish creams, but it wouldn't be bad. It's just that they carry a lot more character and we kind of want dumb, simple flavors for this. That's them, those are the ingredients. Yep, there's some ingredients in those shakers and those are the ingredients. Now we need to add some ice. I need to add ice to both of these. Could happen today. Could happen today. We might see. Something very seldom seen on how to drink. We're gonna do it. It's gonna happen. Double shaking. Let's strain these into our tasty tankard. Whoa, look at that. Creamy. There is our tasty tankard. Kind of an alcoholic milkshake. I think you've got a few options for garnishes. You could just grate some chocolate or nutmeg right over the top. I think that or a quick shake of some heavy cream, like it was a, um, an Irish coffee kind of thing. It's the kind of drink that just kind of calls for that sort of thing. I happen to have some whipped cream here from another episode I was shooting and I think it's gonna look really nice that way. So let's put some whipped cream on this, okay? Oh yeah, look at that. Woo! Personally, I think a little bit of cinnamon, although it's not called for in the recipe, I think a little bit of cinnamon would be really nice. I'm gonna try something silly that I've never tried to do on the show. If there's cinnamon coming out of a dredger on this show, I want it on fire. Ooh, yeah. There we go. And there we have the Tasty Tank. You gotta put fire in the thumbnail. Uh, this is for all the other drink makers on YouTube. Put fire in your thumbnail. If you can do it, do it. If you, if you have that option, go for it. Don't do it where it doesn't call for it, but if you can get it in there, do it. There it is, my tasty tankard. Looks like something that they would serve at Universal Studios. I don't know, <laughs> a little over the top here, but I mean, it's a tankard, it's gonna be tasty. Here we go. Mm. It's so good. I had to really, oh, and the cinnamon. It, I, I think I just did a line of cinnamon actually off the top of it accidentally, but it's actually really good. One moment, please. Wow, that's awesome. So <laughs> the combination of the cinnamon and like the slightly burnt cinnamon actually is really good. This drink tastes like a butterscotch chocolate milkshake with this cinnamon kick that comes in surprisingly late considering it's up there on top of the whipped cream. I wouldn't even use the word decadent to describe this because it goes way beyond decadent. This is melted ice cream. This is absolutely a milkshake, this is a dessert. And I guess this is the kind of thing humans drink, are known for drinking over there in the Mass Effect universe, okay? I wouldn't know, as I mentioned, Star Control. Chocolate, um, cream, butterscotch. Here's the thing, do I taste the Malibu? Not specifically, but I did actually try this without the Malibu and it did taste different. It was less full, less round. It was missing something in its base. I can't quite explain it. That was kind of holding up the chocolate. So I can't say that you should skip the Malibu. I mean, certainly, I guess you could, but it's not doing nothing in there. And the Baileys, yes, definitely it's in there. And I, and I stand by my ratio because I think if you put any more Baileys in this than I did, it takes over. It becomes really loud. Um, to the point where you can't really taste the other things are happening. The most interesting part of this drink to me, and I use interesting in a way that like a 12 year old is interesting in ice cream and Twizzlers and me, I love ice cream and Twizzlers. But the most interesting part of this drink is that bitter chocolate iced milk with the butterscotch snops and the cinnamon all together. That is fun and delicious and Presented like this, no, it's, it, it, I mean, we're making very lowbrow milkshake kind of thing, but that is a flavor profile that I think you would find at like a table side dinner service at like a very fancy restaurant someplace where they're making like bananas, like it's, it's almost like a bananas foster or something. Like it tastes decadent in a sophisticated way, almost, almost. I mean, not quite, 
but there is something in that. Certainly you don't need to make a 20 ounce tankard of the stuff. You could do a six, uh, you know, a recipe based on one shaker or even half of that would be fine. <laughs> if you don't want to go into a diabetic coma, I do like this better. This is a better drink than this, but this isn't, this is fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, and following all that stuff. And, uh, oh, 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 look at all these other, these other episodes of the show. Cause I've been making the show for like six years. Look at them. Look at them showing up. Other video game drinks. Oh, maybe you wanted to stick around and fall into a little how to drink hole and watch like 12 or so hours of how to drink right now. Maybe that's what you want to do. No pressure. No pressure. But, you know, do it.